We are in Italy 500 years ago. There couldn't be a more exciting moment in Italian history. This is the heart of the Renaissance, right? So we have a culture which is filled with beauty and with creativity and is saturated, is soaked in brutality and corruption. And nowhere is that more so than right at the very center of power in the Vatican in Rome. The head of the family is the Pope, uh, the brain of Putin and the body of Pavarotti by this part in history. And he has one aim in mind, which is to make his family the most important family in Italy and his weapons are his illegitimate children. If you remember, he's had one son that's crashed and burned, murdered, almost probably by his brother. He's got his daughter, Lucretia, who survived two marriages. Her last husband was murdered, certainly by her brother, because he didn't fit in with their plans. And at barely 20, she's now off to a third dynastic marriage in the state of Ferrara. And then there is Cesare Borgia, that murderous brother. Ruthless, handsome, decadent, charismatic, clever. And by the time this novel opens, really cutting a swathe, he's like a comet moving through Italy. But his real problem, and I think the pulsing narrative of this book, is old father time, if you like. Because Cesare can be brilliantly successful as long as his father lives. While the Pope is alive, he can do anything. So what you've got basically here is an Oedipal story. You've got a son trying to take over and push the pace from a father, and the father being Rodrigo Borgia, being bloody-minded and angry right the way back. And then, quietly on the other side of Italy, you have Lucretia walking a kind of tightrope. You know, at one level, a political tightrope with a husband who is indifferent to her and a father-in-law who's a miser. At another level, a literal life and death tightrope because she very nearly dies of malarial fever and loses the child that she's carrying. And thirdly, an emotional tightrope, and this is probably the most dangerous of all, when she falls in love, but she doesn't fall in love with her husband. But there's one other ingredient which I think really lifts it above any kind of thrilling, exciting historical novel, which is that there is one watcher on all of this from the sidelines. And he is probably one of the most famous and influential of political commentators throughout history. His name is Niccolo Machiavelli. At this moment in history, he's a young, jobbing diplomat, and his job is to follow Cesare Borgia around Italy as the Florentine ambassador. And it's what Machiavelli sees and hears and experiences along with us that allows him to write the most famous book in history, The Prince.